This is an instructional video on how to install a front disc brake conversion kit on a Scout 800. Never get below a vehicle that isn't held up by at least two jacks or jack stands. This kit is easy to install, but we highly recommend that you have a professional install it. Brakes are dangerous. If they go, if something's wrong, it's very dangerous. Um, there's also a lot of steps to this. And someone who does this every day is going to be much more qualified than than you, um, the, the casual brake worker on her, um, to get done correctly. First thing you got to do is remove the tire and the hubs. The hubs are held in place with a snap ring. You're going to have to get all that grease out of the way so you can see the snap ring. And here we are removing it. And then the interior hub will be easily removed. Now we're looking at the hub. Inside the hub are two big nuts. They're called jam nuts. They not only hold your tire on, or your wheel and hub on, but they also adjust how much load is on the bearing. It's kind of confusing at first, but once you've installed one or two of them, you start to see how the whole system works. This is a lock ring, and this one is old and worn out, and we're going to be putting in a brand new one that has a good ability to lock the nut, the jam nut, into position. <clears throat> this is the inner jam nut. This is the one that actually sets how much weight is placed onto the bearing. And this one will come out all the way. And then there's going to be one more washer in there and that will come out with the hub. Now, the only thing left to remove is the actual brake backing plate, and that's what's happening here. These are the old drum brakes. The rubber hose is gonna have to be removed completely. Your kit will provide you with a brand new stainless steel braided hose. And then here it goes. These are all parts that are included in your kit. You will have to put in the correct bearing races. And this is showing you how they go in. Your written directions will give you further, much more detailed information on this. And this is how these parts are going to arrive in your kit. The, uh, the lug nuts or the, the lug studs are going to be um, included separately in a bag and you're going to have to install them. The um, races have to be kind of driven home and that's what we're doing here and we're walking it in so we tap a little here tap a little there and you keep going in a circle with it and before you know it it'll be driven all the way down onto that stop And then this is the inner bearing race. And you'll drive that all the way into the stop. So this is how you install the hub onto the rotor. You set the rotor on top. Then the studs are pushed up from below. That's the stud. And that's the lug nut. So the stud goes in from the bottom and you'll put a lug nut onto it. As you tighten the lug nut, it's going to pull the stud into position. It's gonna drag it all the way in through the rotor. Once you've done this, it's time to grease your brand new bearings that will be included in the kit. Greasing up the bearings is um, an old art and you put a great big blob of of grease in your hand and you scoop up a little tiny bit of grease in there and you see how we sped this up to make it more entertaining <clears throat> and you go all the way around until grease is coming out of the top of the bearing again there's a lot of steps to this 
And there's a lot of little things to know about, and that's why we highly recommend that you have a shop do this. You can get it done yourself, but um, it is highly recommended that a professional brake shop do this. These are the brand new brake lines. The brand new brake lines need to be fixed onto the body. There's a lock, a, a locking star ring that needs to be put on there. And then this is the brake hose retainer clip that comes with your kit. And that's what, that, what locks it into position on the body of your vehicle. We're going to clean up the old grease, the old contaminated grease. This is the brake back or the, the brake plate or the brake bracket plate. And it's going to go into approximately the 10 o'clock position. There are six brand new grade eight bolts that are supplied with your kit that will lock it into place. And that's pretty much what it should look like when you get it into position. Now, the caliper that's going to go onto this brake plate, it has to be able to move left and right about an inch freely. <clears throat> this is a conversion kit, and so these axles were made long before disc brakes were a popular or even common thing. There's a little tiny bit that you're going to possibly need to scrape off or grind off of the brake or off of the axle housing. Some axles that we've encountered require this, some don't. However, if you don't grind this little area that we're going to show you in just a minute, um, and it is high, it's uh, covered in great detail in the written directions. If you don't grind this area off, it's possible that once your brake pads start wearing down, that the brake caliper will only be braking on one side. It's not a life-threatening situation, but it is, um, it will wear out your brake pads much more quickly. Now, it's kind of hard to see here, but I'm in there marking exactly where the brake caliper would hit, and you can see two little marks in there, and we're just going to grind that down a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch, just to make sure that the brake caliper can um, can float left to right freely without, in, without bumping into anything. Again, some axles need this and some don't. So make sure you slide yours back and forth and make sure you don't have a clearance before you grind anything off. Most of what we're grinding off is um, 50 years of rust and grime and, and built up grease and that sort of thing and a little bit of it's steel. But now we're going to do a another test installation and this is going to tell us whether we have free left and right play by putting a piece of paper in there and then letting it go left or right or you know forcing the um, the caliper left and right um, if you basically remove the piece of paper and there's no damage to it it's a really good way to know that you have free left and right movement That's what you'd want to what you'd want to look for. Once you've ascertained that you have freedom of the caliper to move freely left and right, it's time to grease up and install the um, uh, the the hubs, the bearings onto the spindle. Here, this is the outer bearing. And as the, uh, there's a, a first washer that goes on here, and that one has a, a, a little key on it. That little knob or that little notch is a, a, what, this, what they call a key. And it's going to go into the key way. Um, and then there's going to be a jam nut. This is the first jam nut. 
And this jam nut is the one that sets or loads the bearing. Um, it puts a little bit of left, left and right tension on the bearing. So it keeps your wheel um, uh, move, uh, rolling straight um, so that there's no kind of wobble in your wheel. Um, if you tighten it up too much, it will put too much pressure on your bearings. Um, and if not enough, your, your tire can actually move left and right. And that will wear out your bearings just as fast. So you want it a, a, you know, about hand tight. And then after you've done that tightening or, or set the preload on the bearing, you'll put in a lock washer. This lock washer, we've uh, put in a brand new one here. This is not included in your kit. We do have kits for these uh, uh, lock washers and jam nuts, brand new ones, but you'll reuse your old ones uh, unless you buy brand new ones. Um, so this will lock down, and this uh, that second one, you lock into position pretty, pretty stiffly, and then you bend over the tab on the lock washer um, to freeze that outer nut into position. Now here, we're loading the calipers. That means to put into position the brake pads and preparing it for final installation over the brake rotor. The brake rotor, by the way, is the big shiny silver thing that we put on there that was attached to the hub. And again, this is just final installation of the of the uh, the brake caliper um, with the brake pads in position and tightening that all down. Double checking again for free movement of the caliper. You can use whatever you want to to determine whether it's freely moving or not. Um, just a sheet of paper is what we had handy and it's a great way to go. Now they're preparing for the installation of the banjo bolt which relays the hydraulic pressure from your master cylinder directly into the cylinder of the caliper. This is the banjo bolt and on uh, you need two of these copper uh, crush washers. Sometimes you might get aluminum crush washers, but they're made out of a, a soft metal specifically so that they conform um, to the surfaces that you're trying to seal up. So there'll be two on each side, um, one on the inner and one on the outer surface of the uh, banjo bolt adapter on the brake line. And then here's the second one going on the inner and then that will screw directly into the brake caliper. Some of the kits that we supply have a, a banjo adapter on the stainless steel brake line. Not all, but some of them do. And you'll have to um, tighten not only the, the banjo bolt, but also tighten the brake line onto the ad banjo adapter. In the slightly upper right-hand frame, you'll see a silver nut. That silver nut is for bleeding and that um, when you install your caliper, you always want to make sure that that's in the up position. And here we're doing some bleeding the brakes, which is what you're going to have to do to get it on the road. Never ever test your brakes in traffic. Always find a place like a parking lot where you have lots of space to brake or to come to a stop. Here at Scout Parts, we make lots of kits. This particular kit is SP18307. We've enjoyed making them for you and have a great drive.